I grew up in Alvarado, Minnesota, which sounds like a Spanish Mexican name, but it, it was northern Minnesota, just a few miles from Oslo, which was the capital of Norway. Um, and uh, I spent uh, my childhood in, in Pole County, Minnesota, and uh, grew up there. Uh, went uh, to high school in, uh, and grade school in Alvarado, and uh, sang in a quartet. Uh, and uh, we had a great time there. I was, we sang for two years together, and, uh, and then two years, Donald Olson, who uh, was uh, who is now in New Mexico, and I hadn't seen him for 64 years until two years ago, when Ed Myra and, and Audrey and Vivian and I were uh, stopped there to visit him. He otherwise he he, had, he worked in a bank in California and retired to this small town outside of uh, Phoenix. Phoenix, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> so we, we, uh, we sang in a quartet and one, one of the boys was killed in a plane crash in North Dakota. And uh, other than that, uh, we, we still uh, we tried to remember some of the songs we sang as a quartet, but we couldn't. We did appear in at WDAY in Fargo, uh, and and we sang for about a half an hour there, and they recorded it, mm -hmm. and then they played it afterwards uh, for for us and on the air. Mm -hmm. um, and then in 1949. I uh, graduated from 1946, I graduated from high school, and in 1946 I enrolled at Concordia, and uh, we, we sang throughout the United States, but in 1949 we took a trip to Norway on an old ship which made its last voyage and af after that I think it was junked and a, a new ship was built and it's still as far as I know is still operating as uh, a Norwegian uh, uh, ocean liner but we we lived there or we stayed in Norway then in 1949, and we uh, got acquainted with a lot of people. We were there for 34 days, and we traveled from, uh, we landed in Stavanger, and had to steam slowly down the coast of Norway because the wake from the ship would bash up all the, the little boats on the seashore. Then we landed in Oslo, Norway, which is the capital, and uh, we we moved on from there around the around the south end of Norway, up the west coast uh, to Trondheim, mm -hmm. and uh, that was an interesting place. We we sang in a, an old cathedral there that had been in have been, been built, and this was 1949 now, for 400 years it had stood there and had been worked on every year by workmen who were carpenters and so on, and they kept the building in tremendous shape. Some of the building uh, had been bombed by the Nazis in, in the war, and uh, they had been replaced, so they 
those building, that part of the building was rather new. And then from there on, we went to along the east coast of Norway and back to uh, uh, the uh, Oslo where we sailed back to the States. <clears throat> uh, I did do some fishing on my own while we were in Norway. I, uh, I, I, I stayed at a, at a place on the west edge of Norway and I got up early in the morning and walked way out on the, on the fjord and uh, caught some fish. And of course, uh, the, the uh, people in the, in the choir were a little worried about me because I, hadn't, I didn't have any experience standing on a big round <laughs> rock throwing a fish line out. But I came home with a bunch of fish and we celebrated uh, and had fish for supper and breakfast and all that sort of thing. Um, why don't you tell about your family and growing up? Yeah. Uh, my family, when I grew up, my family were uh, living in Pole County in a town named Alvarado, which again sounds Spanish. Because, uh, and I don't know where it got its name, but there were a bunch of sands in town one was my, uh, who delivered our mail, and Johnny Sands was a, a banker, and, and uh, by the way, his son is in Minneapolis now, and is a banker there. Any brothers or sisters, Matt? Oh yeah, I had, I had one brother, and he's 89 years old. He'll be 90 in August, and I have, an older sister who is now no longer with us. I have an, another sister that is no longer with me or with us. And uh, I have a, uh, beside myself now. Yes. Uh, uh, I have a, um, I have a younger sister, Opal, and she is, in uh, in northern Minnesota, someplace in some town. Annandale. Annandale, yeah, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there were five of us in our family, and and uh, two two of them are gone. My mother had a, an adopted sister who uh, was adopted, and by my grandparents. And then, in, in, uh, at age 13, she came to live with us on the farm in Sandsville Township. And uh, she, uh, she was a, a very, very strong woman. And her dad was named, by Norway, in Norwegian, it'd be Mikkel. Only it's, his name was Michael, mm -hmm. and my aunt was a was a um, was a uh, an orphan. So my grandparents, Oli and Bertha Hendrickson, uh, adopted her, mm -hmm. and at age twelve she came to live with us on the farm. My grandparents had children of their own. Johan, who died uh, rather young, and then uh, they adopted a son named Lloyd Hendrickson, and <clears throat> then there was August and Henry, Mary, and Olga, in in the rest of the family there. This is Matt's mother's family. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And were they all in the same area? Of they were all in the same area of, of, 
of uh, Hegdom and uh, Sandsville Township. Okay. Yeah. They all went to our church, in fact, in, in a town af named after a town in Norway. The, 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 our church was called Kongsvinger. And uh, that church burned down and it was rebuilt. And my grandparents then were buried right at the front entrance. So every time that uh, there was a funeral, we always went to the front entrance. But you could see the church that had burned down. There was a sidewalk leading up to the uh, to where it had stood. Mm -hmm. But it was struck by lightning. <clears throat> Tell what your father did. Oh, my father was a, was a farmer. And uh, he, uh, he, he fathered uh, with, with one of the Hendrickson women. My mother was a Hendrickson, and, uh, and uh, they had uh, five children. My brother, Bennett, my sister, Helen. Helen was the oldest. And then my brother, and then I came next, yeah. You were right in the middle. 1928, I was yeah. born. Yeah. Yes. How big a family did your father have? Did he have siblings? Uh, no. No. No, he was adopted. And that's a, that's a story too, because my grandmother moved to California and had a, this my father out of wedlock. We never met the f real father. Mm -hmm. But she uh, came in, uh, in 1924, I think it was, she came when my dad was plowing and uh, showed my dad the picture of his real father. And he looked at it and then he handed it back to her and she tore it up in little pieces and buried it in the furrow and oh, that, that was it. <laughs> That was it. That's it, the end. That's the end of that, yeah. 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 <laughs> but my, my dad then was adopted by uh, a, a pair. One of the, as I understand it, the father was a, uh, from Sweden. And uh, he'd tell the story about the fact that uh, there was a captain in, in the army that he served in for a while. And he was so tall that my grandpa, who was also very tall, could stand under his arms. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then my, my, my grandma was born in Norway, okay. as I get the story, at least. Sure. So, uh, but they lived right on the border. So they had a, a good courtship, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it was, uh, it, it worked out well. Yeah. But they didn't have any children, the two of them. Uh -huh. So my, they adopted my dad. And then my dad had another adopted sister. And uh, there was another man that I, I, been, I remember my dad mentioning him and my parents did talk about him, but his name was Martin Furaset, which, uh, and he was, he came from Duluth, I think. And I don't know what the relationship was there. But uh, my dad did have a cousin, and this is uh, where I got the finance, finances to go to Norway. Oh. <laughs> I, I slept with him one night up above a, a, a dime store in Main Street of Grand Forks. Uh -huh. And I, was, I wanted to go to Norway with, with the choir. Yeah. So uh, I, I didn't muster up enough nerve to ask him if I could borrow uh, $300. We had to pay our one way uh, to Norway. The right. college paid the rest. So he opened his dresser drawer, 
with a long key on the end of a chain, licked his fingers, and he peeled off. <laughs> Three hundred. Three hundred dollar bills. Oh. oh. <laughs> it was a big roll like that. <laughs> and as as I understand, because I did go up, I had to pay him after I got my job in in Haver, Montana. Mm -hmm. So I I'd send him. Uh, bills to, to pay that off. Sure. But uh, I'm not sure just exactly what his connection was uh, to uh, Norway, except that I think he came from Norway uh, through Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So quite, it was true of quite a few people. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And uh, so they, uh, they came. And his name was Peter Viker. Yeah, he's a whole Norwegian name too. So, which which regions of Norway do you call home? Where did your families come from? Uh, I, I'm not I'm not sure. I I think that, well, my 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 uh, grandparents by adoption mm -hmm. because they adopted my father. Sure. Uh, they came one from. Sweden and one from Norway, okay. and um, uh, that's a, that's the only remembrance I have of sure. them. Sure. I think his his blood mother came from from uh, uh, Norway too. Okay. But uh, I don't. The Hendricksons. Do you know where they were from? The Hendricksons. Do you know, do you know where they? Oh, let's see. I'm not sure. We can look it up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've yeah. got that information here. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, because she's from Montana, so she doesn't... Yeah, she doesn't have the memory. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't re remember where my, where my uh, uh, grandparents came from. All I know is that they established this Kongsvinger congregation. And... Uh, Consequently, that's where I grew up and mm -hmm. went to Sunday school and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was born on December 26, 1934, in a little town which is no longer called Wheeler, Montana. <clears throat> Dad worked on the Fort Peck Dam, uh, you know, that big dam that's outside of, well, in Fort Peck, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I remember, uh, I have seen pictures, I don't remember it, but I was born in a shack in 1934. Uh, um, I, I came early and Dad was going to try and find a doctor and of course when he got back I had already been born. And they brought in all these little shacks for, the, for these families that were working. I mean, it became a little town. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was like they do now with the FEMA trailers, you know, they brought. And so that is no longer there, of course. And from there, um, and this is kind of vague. I, am, I don't know if I have the sequence right here, but uh, after, after Dad um, was uh, finished working on the dam, I think that we, we moved. My brother was also born. On uh, in Wheeler, mm -hmm. so they, that was a quite a long project, I think. Sure. And uh, anyhow, my sister wasn't born there; she was born in Glasgow. So I'm thinking that we moved to Poplar, and Dad was working there for the gas company. And um, I, I and Mom, she worked too. I remember; I think we lived in a little apartment. Now this is kind of during the end of the Depression, sure. so. Times were kind of tough, sure. <laughs> and and um, I I remember one incident that as a little kid, and this I think maybe was still in Wheeler, uh, when we lived in this little shack. Uh, I would go to the neighbors and have breakfast every morning. <laughs> yeah, kind of took me under their wing. Not that I couldn't have breakfast at home. I just thought these were nice people. Um, 
anyhow, then we moved, moved to Poplar, and Poplar was on the Indian Reservation. I was always kind of afraid in that town because, you know, the, and, and I don't think this is, is a, a nasty to say that they call them the squaws. You know, they would sit outside the doors of the, of the businesses, and, and I, as, a, as a child, I was kind of frightened about all this. Uh, at one point, we lived in Glasgow, and that's when my sister, and I think that may have been before Poplar. I, I just don't have this sequence right, I don't think. But anyhow, we lived in Glasgow, and Dad, um, Dad was working in Seattle. What, what was he doing? Can you remember? Well, he, was, he was working on uh, the... Uh, something for the yeah, war, I don't know. The, the war, yeah. I don't know exactly. Building ships or something. I, I don't know. He he worked in Seattle, and so we were uh, uh, mom and and us kids, and we're in Glasgow, and I remember the base was just not too far from us. Uh, but my sister was born there, and 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 uh, I can remember this is kind of a fun story. I came home. We we were with Grandma and Grandpa, who lived in uh, way in the northeast part of Montana, in a little place called Scobie in Flaxville. Mm -hmm. And um, and we went to stay with Grandpa and Grandma on the farm, <clears throat> my dad's parents, mm -hmm. <clears throat> on the farm. And we came home then because we'd stayed there when Mom had the baby. And we came home and she said, well, and Mom was all dressed up. She had her fingernails polished and everything. I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> And, and we, 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 she said, well, go in and look in the basket. And it was just like a, a, a wicker clothes basket. And here, here was my sister laying in there. <laughs> so she was born in Glasgow. There were just three of us. My, my brother, I was the oldest, and then my brother Byron, and my sister Myrna, who now my brother is deceased, and my sister lives in Colorado Springs. Okay. So anyhow, from, from um, Poplar... We and, and I, our grandparents, and this is another story that uh, that uh, I, I have to tell you because this was another frightening thing as a child. I was probably in the th third or fourth grade, and I, I wanted to go see Grandma and Grandpa, and they lived in a farm over by Scobie, so it wasn't too far from Poplar, and so I went with the mail carrier, <laughs> the, the mail carrier, all by myself. And it rained, and it oh. poured, and <laughs> and uh, you know they, he had this big old. Uh, it wasn't a truck exactly, but it was kind of a looked like a Hummer kind of a thing. You know, mm -hmm. it carried mail in, and he he had to go into the field because the road was washed out, and oh. he cut his face. Oh, I had the biggest story to tell Grandpa and Grandma <laughs> when I got there. <laughs> I was so scared. <clears throat> But anyhow, I, uh, then I was in fifth grade, and that's when we moved from Poplar to Haver. And of course, Haver was just a big place compared to where I'd been. 15,000 people about. Yeah. And, Railroad down. Yeah. And uh, we moved there in 45, 1945, and I entered fifth grade. And um, that was, we lived there until I got married. <laughs> and, we, uh, and then we lived eight years in, well, no, you were eight years in Haver, yep. I think. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, how, I can't remember how many years we lived in Haver, but we had two children when we came to Spring Grove, and I had a third one on the way. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tell we us were. about the courtship. When did Matt arrive? Okay, uh, were you and... okay. this is, um, now don't get preconceived ideas when oh. I tell you this story. Um, he, I, when he came to have her, I was a sophomore in high school. Skinny, dangly thing, you know, I had all uh, skinny arms and I, I've never been that skinny since. But, <laughs> but anyhow, he no. of course was our choral director. He did the, did the choir and I was in the church choir and he taught confirmation. I, I had already been confirmed. But um, you know, and then he taught me voice lessons. Well, you know, it, it just the the um, it the friendship grew. You know, and um, I I did go to college one year, and then of course then I got married. Yeah, and then the babies came. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> in Haver. So you, in Haver. So we were still in Haver. We were time. still in Haver. Yeah. Um, Mom and Dad, you know, lived in Haver, uh, and so 
you know, that uh, mother worked uh, as a cook in the Devlin School. It was uh, right down from where we lived at that time. We rented a house furnished. And, and then Rolf Hansen was our pastor, and he, he uh, ended up baptizing all of our children. Yeah. And uh, then in 19, let's see, we moved in 58. Rolf must have come uh, in January of 1958. And then that. we came in June of 1958. Okay. And we lived in that house right next to Murphy DeVergston over there for one month while Janora Rauch was busy having the house painted and cleaned up, you know, and fixed up nice for us over here behind Valberg. Yeah. Yeah, and we lived. We were there, um, I think, three years, and then we just we outgrew the house. <laughs> sure. uh, and we then we bought one of um, the Reed's houses over right behind Norma and and Jim. Uh, now, where are we going from there? Uh, we we had uh, let's see, we had three children here in Spring Grove, and Esther Hansen wrote me, or J Rolf wrote and said that, e that Esther had said, Vivian, don't be worried about having a baby, she said, because you get the best care in this little hospital in Spring Grove. And of course I did, I did, and we had three babies here. Um, and, uh, well, let's see, our children all grew up here and, and um, we, then in 1968, was it 68 when we moved to the farm? Yep. Uh, we moved to the farm. First of all, I'm going to back up a little bit because um, we lived in the house in town for several years and then when Lenny Myra went to Vietnam, mm -hmm. then Jana moved out to California also and I think, I don't know if uh, Lenny's folks were out there too and she lived with them. Okay. Uh, I, I think she taught out there. Mm -hmm. And and then, uh, so we were on their farm for, for two years of that, but then in 1968 yep. then we moved to the farm. Richard Storley, <laughs> not Richard, but David Storley Recording. called, they were living on the farm, and David Storley called and wondered if yep. he would be interested in, in buying a little farm. Oh, I tell you, he was so happy. Yep. My wife said it, no. So anyhow, we we moved out there, and it, it, this is kind of interesting with the five kids, you know, uh, Carrie, four, Carrie and four boys, uh, Eric and uh, Luther and Paul and Peter. Carrie was second in line, and we moved out there with all the kids. Carrie got a horse, and and the boys. The first Sunday we were on the farm. The boys had set a trap, and I we had they had their Sunday clothes on, and here they went outside, and here they came back was they were dragging a fox or what was it? Oh. They, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know they were so it, it was just a wonderful oh, move. Different world. Yeah. We <laughs> had forty years on the farm and lots of wonderful, wonderful memories, um, and now then in um, uh, like three years, going on four years ago, then we moved to town. Matt um, had had one stroke, and then he had another stroke, and uh, so it was time to move from the farm because uh, it was too much for us to handle, but it was, we were blessed with 40 years on the farm. Absolutely. And now we are in our uh, Oh, last part of our journey on yeah. earth and yeah. and, um, and yes yes we we are having uh, lots of good memories I mean he I have learned things about him and his childhood and growing up years that I never knew uh -huh. and so it's it's these are good years also yeah we haven't talked a little bit about your parents and grandparents okay much about um, yes um, well, it, this is an interesting part of our story as husband and wife. My father also was, was born out of wedlock. So we don't know the genes on, the, on those sides of the family, but my father was born in uh, Bryant, Indiana, is where my grandmother <laughs> lived. And I don't know exactly how uh, Grandpa Knudsvig, um, met grandma. I, I, I don't know how that 
how that is unless he came to Montana or she came to Montana and met him. He he was he was a farmer uh, on a farm and right out of Scobie, you know, uh, 30 miles from Scobie, and that was their shopping center. But you know, that was nothing for them. 30 miles was like yeah. going from here to Caledonia, <laughs> really. Um, uh, but anyhow, um, Grandpa married Grandma, and she was, uh, what was her maiden name? Um, uh, can you remember, Matt, what Grandma's maiden name was? It doesn't make any yeah. difference right now. Okay, so anyhow, um, they were married, and they had, then of course, Dad, and then they had a, my Aunt Martha, my Grandma now, and Grandpa, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then they had twin daughters. Reba and Greta, and they are still living. In fact, interestingly enough, they were in Matt's English ca class at Concordia. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> but they had to leave because Grandma got cancer, and so they had to go home and take care of Grandma okay. un until she passed. And then they went to college. They went. They, I think, they went to college in Hammer. We had a junior college there, okay. and, and you know, at that point, you could get, you know, you could teach after two years. Sure. sure. So uh, they were they were teachers. Uh, we uh, just another interesting story. We went. Uh, we had a family reunion, a Knutsvig family reunion on the on Grandma and Grandpa's farm. I mean, they were both deceased, sure. but they said, where, "Where do you want to have the reunion?" And I said, "Oh, I'd love to have it on the farm." Sure. And so we did have it on the farm. And of course, Carrie has twin boys, and my aunts. They're tiny little ladies, about this this tall, and and. Uh, it, one, my one aunt, Reba, Reba, she was probably the, 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 the heavier one of the two. And so when she'd call, she, I, she'd say, or I'd say, well, who is this? It's the pretty one, she'd say. <laughs> 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 and they were so cute. But anyhow, at this reunion, they took a hold of Carrie's twins and they just scooted along and they said, well, let's have our picture taken. <laughs> <laughs> They were they were so sweet. So uh, that was my, that was Dad's family, um, and um, it, we we had wonderful fond memories of going to the farm because Grandma they would go out and kill a chicken and they'd get the ice cream uh, going the homemade ice cream and and we just uh, it was a f and then and then they had an old schoolhouse and so then my sister and I would have that as a a playhouse, uh -huh. and my brother would throw rocks in there, you know, and just be mean. <laughs> so I, I remember, and slopping the pigs, we would take, you know, we'd sure. do that, and we'd go on horse rides, and, and they had a, a big barrel on top of a, a little building, mm -hmm. and that was our shower, you know, because oh, it would get, the water would get heated from the sun. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> And then they had a big fenced-in garden, so we'd always have wonderful things from the garden. Fond, fond memories. And Grandpa had a few cows. They didn't. They had mostly uh, feeders because they had all this land, you know. And then they'd have, then they'd have the big roundup, and they'd they'd um, uh, brand them, you know. And that was a big time thing. So <laughs> it, that was fun to to be able to to take part in in Grandma and Grandpa's life on the farm. <clears throat> um, now, let's see, my mother's family, um, my mother's mother died when she, when her youngest daughter was six weeks old. She, she had, I always thought she had nephritis and that was something they couldn't treat in that day, but now in this, in this uh, literature I've got here, she died of a heart attack. They took her to, I don't know, Minot or Bismarck or someplace. Okay. But she died, and she, you know, the youngest daughter was only six weeks old. Mother had five sisters. Um, mother was the oldest, and they, they were bing, 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 just, just like our, yeah. you know, our family. <laughs> um, uh, my mother's mother was a Mollerstoon. And um, she, I, I think she uh, was raised in Twin Valley, Minnesota, I think, from, from what I've read now. But my, my mother's father, who was um, Norgard, uh, John Norgard, his mother was from Norway. And here is the name of the place. 
think I, I um, yeah. Uh, Oster Dalen, Oster Dalen, O S T E R D A L E N, Norway. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oster Dalen. Um, Is that two dots above the O? Well, I don't know. I can't see dots. Oh. I can't see them. Uh, but anyhow, she came oh. from. Uh, she, she came from Norway, and then uh, where I, w I was surprised too that Ada, Minnesota. They went. They went to Ada, Minnesota, for a while, and then they moved to Flaxville, which is just a little town right out of Scobie. I mean, it's smaller than Scobie. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I, <clears throat> and they had two sons. Uh, my gra great grandmother, Nels and John, and John Nels. Uh, uh, let's see. J my my grandpa worked as a carpenter, and he was working in somebody's house, and he got gassed from some gas that you can't smell. He was working in the house, and and he he didn't survive that. So, yeah. Uh, but anyhow, they they um, had. Let's see. John, yeah, they had five girls, and my mother was the oldest. And um, then they, I, in turn, had children, and I, I won't give you the details on that. Um, what else? Um, I have a, a fond memory with my great grandmother. She lay, she slept in a feather bed, you know. Oh, it's just soft feather uh -huh. bed. And, and I oftentimes would crawl in bed with her. I remember that. And then she'd say, Vivneen. She called me Vivneen. I want my coffee. She'd have to ha have, to have her coffee at 5.30 in the morning, you know, her coffee. That was an important important thing for her. Uh, that, w that was fond memories. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Well, I think it'd be interesting, since you had, you know, from the late 50s in Spring Grove, some of your experiences here. Matt, obviously, with, yeah. with the choirs and, so and let's go all, back. which is, of course, in, embedded in all of our minds. Yeah. <laughs> and so you both, much. both taught you know, religious training and such, whether it was on Sunday school or release time and so mm -hmm. forth. So. You want to go ahead, Matt, and do choir and release time and calling? And yeah, well, I was half time with the public school and also with the church. And I also did calling as a lay assistant of the church for years and years. Uh, I can't imagine how many miles I walked from one end of town to the other, and both ways, by the way. But uh, I made many, many calls. Uh, <clears throat> but it was it was it was interesting. And uh, you know when you when you call on people, you you meet all kinds, and uh, it was it was interesting. Uh, I should say this: when I, when we first came here, you go to the post office, you wouldn't hear an English word. <laughs> Everybody was talking Norwegian. <laughs> My mother loved it. Oh, yeah. she thought she was in heaven. Everybody, yeah. everybody talked Norwegian. <laughs> and you grew up speaking Norwegian, both of you? No, no I did. I mother yeah. talked, but they, she, we never. But yeah, never her it. mother talked it, and she talked it to me. Her mother talked oh, to me. Right. And no. We could understand, and she didn't know what was going on. No. <laughs> And when she got with, together with her sisters, did they have fun? And, and oh, they I'm would sure. giggle and laugh, and I, we wouldn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it, it was, it was, it's been a good, good experience uh, to be in a community where, where there are almost all, everybody's Norwegian. <laughs> and they have backgrounds, you know, like you wouldn't believe. Can I share one thing? Uh, Matt has said over and over again that he could hardly wait to get up in the morning. He loved what he was doing. And I don't know how many of us can yeah. say that, that, that life was. And, you know, you know it, it was. I mean, we just lived day by day, by day yeah. you know, and uh, busy with children. And, and you tell about the farm. Well, I had... I had, uh, I had choirs at school, I taught voice at school, I had uh, choirs after school, church choirs, and uh, I was also a uh, 
Luther League advisor for a while. And once in a while, uh, I'd preach when the pastor was gone. And uh, I've even held funeral services here uh, when, when the pastor wasn't around. Sure. And I did sick, sick calls also, by the way. Shut-ins. Yeah, shut-ins. Did a lot of that. Yeah. So uh, it, it's, it's been a variety of things that, you know, I, I can't even uh, uh, say what it would be like to have one job and do the same thing over and over and over again because it, I just wasn't caught in that. And then I farmed for sure. 40 years. One thing I have to uh, tell you was that when when we got married, he, he was registered at the SEM. And we were going to the seminary. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he changed his mind. That no, there were too many kids that, uh, you know, asked me, if, you know, wouldn't I stay a little longer, especially the juniors and seniors, you know. Yeah. But uh, uh, I had decided that I was going to go to the cell. Well, when I, when I left Haver, I got to thinking, you know, why, why, should I, why should I go to the seminary and be caught in that uh, routine? Mm. <laughs> you were doing many of the same things in your regular... Yeah, I was doing the same thing and I had a f chance to farm for 40 years yeah. besides. Yeah. I bail a lot of hay. In. <laughs> <laughs> I think you wrote a few bales of hay too, as I heard. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Down some snowy banks. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, and a, and a, and a, a driveway from the top of the bluff. Down was full of ruts, and <laughs> the, the hay rack would sway back and forth. You wondered how long would it be before we'd roll it. <laughs> Do you remember the the spring that they couldn't get the the the, we couldn't get the corn harvested because winter came soon. Yeah. And so in the spring, Matt and I, the kids were all gone. Mm -hmm. We picked corn by hand. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, and threw it in. Well, you know what? I never had such a tiny waist as I got when I did that. <laughs> Maybe we want to be Amish. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And we... Yeah, you know... I should have kept her at it. Yeah. <laughs> we had such a good time on the farm. We had cows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We tried to make cottage cheese, and you know, you put it, we put it up high, thinking that's how you do it, and that, that, that didn't work. That didn't we, work. <laughs> we made butter. We have funny stories about butter. You better tell that story about Owen Gail Hagen and the butter when we yeah, made the butter. butter. Um, Sometimes I wouldn't always get all the buttermilk out of it, <clears throat> and people would and taste <laughs> be sour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you had milk cattle. Yeah, well? we had two milk cows. Oh. We had a pig. Yeah. We had we had sheep. We had uh, ducks. We had geese. I mean, we had a little bit of every a pet coon. Mm. <laughs> did you have pets, pet skunks, though? No, we didn't have been sk pet skunks. <laughs> no, but I remember the time a, a skunk <clears throat> walked across the yard very slow, and so so uh, Luther ran in the house and got the gun, and, <laughs> and Paul was standing there watching, and Luther was shaking like this, and Luther said, let me take that gun. <laughs> Of course, Paul shot it just like that, but Luther was scared. <laughs> and Paul, Paul decided to go into the army then. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyhow, it was wonderful years on the farm. Big garden, canning, and yeah. you know, you, you felt like you were living in. Well, and when we first moved out to the house, we didn't really do anything to the house for one year. Mm -hmm. We had a cook stove. An old cook stove, an electric stove, the refrigerator was that in that corner, in that big room yeah. that we had. That was the kitchen. Oh. <clears throat> and we, we uh, that first year we lived out there, we just lived like pioneers. Uh. We, he would start the fire and we'd use that stove. And, yeah. and then he just took the saw and cut off. We just did all the remodeling ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Painted the walls. Kids helped and they would scrape off the uh, the wallpaper the that wallpaper. they had glued on, and then 
and then they would make big pictures on the wall before he cut cut it down. You know? Well, this was a considerably old house. Oh, I it's over a hundred years old. Yeah. 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 So, but you know, we made it cozy, and I, yeah, I baked bread, and I thought, well, it it was great. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Were most of the build outbuildings there when you moved in, or did you have to? Build oh them? yes, there were more. There was oh. an old blacksmith shop up up the hill fr from us, and we tore that down, of course. And then there was a big granary in the middle of the yard by the, and we took that down. There's a flower bed there now. Sure, yeah, sure. yeah, <clears throat> and so yeah. And then he built the the big, um, what do you call that big tin building or whatever? The pole barn. Pole barn, yeah. 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 We, well, you were here before Trinity Center was built. Yes. And we yep. always had people ask, us, ask about Trinity Center, you know, who built it or when, and, and you know, is it oh, the yeah. same as it always was, that kind of stuff. Do you have any memories of... Uh, Clarence the Johnson of built the Trinity Center. Yeah, Clarence okay. Johnson. And yeah. who did the design? Was that a local person, or did that come from... Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, was, place was, you know, uh, well, somebody must have designed it. But yeah, I, somebody designed it. But Rolf Hansen was here at the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he officiated through that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. How long did it take to build? Oh gosh, isn't that something? I well, I, I know that uh, we moved in. And what year was that? Yeah, I can't. We had to have our we church book here. We hadn't been we hadn't been here that long okay. when when they built. Because I started teaching in the block building behind the school. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, I suppose I was there for. Maybe eight, nine years. Okay. Really? Yeah, I think so. Maybe. That was still there when I was, when I came to Spring Grove. Yeah. And it, they were happening in there. Yeah. It was 80. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. it was yeah. a few years that we used yeah. for a variety of things. Yeah. Uh, I forget what the date was for that new new building. But, but did, did you have release time then? Where did you have release time when they were building? Oh, I had release time in the fire hall. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can remember that. Yeah, and uh, the kids sat on folding chairs, but I had two or three boys sitting in the back in these nice uh, because they, it was a place also where the city hall people met oh. when they when they weren't use, when we weren't using it. Mm -hmm. And they'd get in the, into these nice chairs with the rock rocking back. And <laughs> <laughs> they were high on the hog. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, they they sat really comfortable. But uh, I don't know how long we were there, but I, I know we st we started in in that because the the guy who was in my first class. Uh, was one of the Hillman boys. Uh -huh. Did you know the Hillman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the, he was in that first class, and then there was a partition between that class and the the one that I wound up in next. Okay. But they took the partition out to to en enlarge the room. Uh -huh. But uh, I know that Hillman was in that first class, and he's. He's in South Dakota now as a plumber, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I, I thought release time for many, many years. And it was, it was, it was, it was part of an organization of five or six churches. Mm -hmm. uh, even uh, in Iowa, there was a church there, yeah. and Black Hammer, and and, uh, and a bunch of these yeah. local churches. Yeah. So, uh, so I got kids from all 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 over the country, practically, and and that went on for quite a few years. Now, of course, it's dwindled. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Spring Grove had quite a history of, of parochial education. Oh yeah, yeah. The they started that in, in 1930 uh -huh. or 24, 1924 is yeah. when they started. And that was that was by uh, representatives from these local congregations. Okay. 
So when you came to Spring Grove to work at Trinity, was there someone in your position before? Yeah, yeah, they let her go. Okay, okay. <laughs> In, in Trinity, he said in Actually, Trinity. What Trinity? He didn't yeah. say school. Oh, I see. Yeah. No, well, it's, no. Well, it's school is fine too. Yeah. But was there somebody doing release time just before you at Trinity? Or oh yeah. Was that, was that the no, no. The that uh, building uh, was that block building behind yeah. the school. Yeah. And that was the old, old. Uh, I don't know if it belonged to, that must have belonged to the church at the time, because when I came here, we, we met in that house right across the street on the corner. Okay. And uh, then we, we moved across the street to the block building behind the school. Okay, yeah. Mm. And uh, I taught there for several years until Trinity Center was built. And that block building had, was it one room on each level, or was there more than enough? No, there was one room on each level, each level. Okay. Uh, upstairs and downstairs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I taught many years there. Who taught before you, though? Who was that? Oh, I forget. Was it a man? Did. Where was it a no, woman? No, it, it was a woman. Okay. Oh. And she, she didn't have a very good, she wasn't liked very well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember who hired you in Spring, at Spring Grove High School? Who was superintendent? Oh, the superintendent was uh, Yelly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Clarence Burlow. Do you remember him? No, I've heard yes. the name. But yes. Yeah. yeah, Clarence Burlow was on the school board, and and he's he's long gone. Yeah. Yeah. But his his wife's still living. Yes, Rosalie is still alive. Rosalie is still alive. Bill, Bill Finn, do you film her or did John? John did, yeah, yeah. Recently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Down in Houston. Rushford, Houston. Well, Houston. Houston, Houston, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and she's old. She's over 80, 90. She's in her 90s. Yes. She's, she's, she's a year over 100, I think. Yeah. Oh, Rosalie. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Yes, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So who was on staff when you came to Spring Grove? Gordy was there, Gordy Patel and Audrey were there. Audrey was there and... Uh, was Helen there at the time? Helen was there, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Helen was there and there was a guy in the wood shop that was there. <laughs> but I can't remember his name now. But Ron Stone uh, yeah. taught that for a while. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And Langerby, remember it? Langerby. Langerby. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Helen... Helen, uh, who? Home. Home. Yeah. Home. Home, yeah. Was Henry Evenmouth? Yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Henry Evenmouth. Okay. And Henry was from the time when Luther was still a boys' school. Oh. Yep. Oh, sure. He was, he was at there. there okay. Uh, there uh, that early. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they, but I know that he used to tell the story of. There used to be a, a a statue in the right in the middle of the square there, and there was no uh, field house at the time. Uh -huh. And it was a, a picture a, a statue of Martin Luther with his hands out like this. And while they were making that statue, <laughs> some people, some boys, got together and they put a blanket across those arms and fill it with beer bottles. <laughs> and that was pretty true for Martin Luther. Well, yeah. <laughs> Appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that was, that was when, at the time when Luther was still a yeah. boys' school. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then, then they, they, when the Luther was still a boys', a boys school, they, they had a little uh, bet on the, uh, about uh, if they could get the uh, the rather straight laced uh, 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 they, they, <laughs> they, like a dean or something yeah like a dean yeah yeah carry carrying bottles of beer <laughs> <laughs> so so they made a bet well, what okay. how did they do that there you go they they uh, a gas can or something? Yeah, they had a gas can. <laughs> it was, was a gas can. 
<laughs> full of beer oh. <laughs> instead of gas. So he didn't know what he was carrying. No, he was carrying, and he thought he was carrying up something to heat the rooms because the Luther <laughs> College had individual heaters in the rooms. <laughs> and he was bringing in the libations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, Henry even more used to talk about that one. Yeah. Oh, fun. <laughs> Well, yeah. when you were at Concordia, who was running the music program at Concordia College? Paul Christensen. Okay. Yep. And then uh, 1969 uh, or 50, no, 49, uh -huh. he was the one that uh, arranged for us to go to Norway. Okay. Did yeah. you also have to wear uh, beanies when you were at, at Concordia? No. When you were a freshman, they didn't do that. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. No. I went to Moorhead State, so we. Used oh yeah. Jazz. No, it was the year. They had to wear beanies. Yeah. Oh. They did. It was when all the veterans came back. Came oh, back okay. from the war. See? Sure. Oh. And of course, that created a lot of problems too. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> some of <laughs> them were guzzlers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they weren't innocent eighteen-year-olds. No, no, no. <laughs> but and I know there that they had to change the rules a little bit yeah. because all the guys, you know, they didn't want to be cooped up and have hours at the dormitories. Sure. So they, 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 they gave it to the girls huh. and, the, yeah. and the guys were, they, they were doing whatever they wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was a good time for high school kids to graduate and go to Concordia. <laughs> <laughs> but they weren't dancing, though. No, they weren't dancing. No, but not. but that's another thing. They'd sneak that and they didn't see. They didn't keep those rules. <laughs> <laughs> Did they ever have the when while you were here in Spring Grove? That was long past the days when kids couldn't dance in Spring Grove and so forth. They didn't have rules here about that, what did they? I don't know. So, yes, we, yes, they did Mickey? have. Really? Okay. They did have rules because I remember, uh, I, well, no, maybe maybe that was in Haver. I think it was because when I was, you know, I graduated in 61 and we had dances all the way through uh -oh, school. Yeah, we, yeah. Well, we did. I did in high school. We yeah, had our own no, dance band. Wow. No, I think that was when I was in high school. And, yeah, and we had a music contest in Crookston, and the kids were talking about the possibility of instituting uh, dancing. Uh -huh. And I, I remember some girls said, let's behave ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, were you guys here when the church was redone? Mm -hmm. And also the controversy of the Tombstone cemetery? Oh, Can yeah. Make some comments about those historical heck activities. Can you remember that? Rolf was here. Yeah, I, re oh. I remember that. Yeah, there was a big hassle about that. Okay. And uh, there was a, a lot of people that were against it because those tombstones had dates long before. And there had been, there had been uh, three churches uh, built and one of them collapsed completely and people were jumping out the windows <laughs> when that thing started to creak. Yeah. And uh, then they built another church where the monument is now in the middle. And uh, and then the, the the third church caught fire and burned. And I don't remember if you, or I don't know if you remember that even in the steeple of this church now, there's charred signs oh, yeah. of, uh, of the church having been caught fire. Because yeah, it didn't burn completely to the ground, but enough that we had to rebuild it. Yeah. yeah. The steeple, yeah. The, the steeple was much higher, I guess. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, the steeple was higher. When the interior of the church was done with paneling and so forth, what year was about was that? Oh, that early oh. 60s? Yeah, yeah I, I think, think so. so. Yeah. Uh, I participated that. I it must have been late fifties. Okay. Late fifties. Fifty eight. Well, yeah. we moved here in fifty eight, though, uh, Mike. Yeah. 
and but I remember demoing the old church, so I was still in school. Oh, the the old church. Oh. The church before the current. Oh, oh, yeah. okay, it's, okay. Are you talking about something else? Well, it, it, the current church though has been modernized. We have pictures. That happened pictures in the late fifties. Okay. It really did, huh? Yeah, or sixty. I mean, but it was shortly before sixty-one. Yeah, we're all just here when it happened, and we were here. I mean, we were here when they started, you know. And the office space and the classroom space, that kind of stuff, was here before you came. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The cemetery. What do you remember about the cemetery? The cemetery was already out in the country when we came. But the old cemetery with the headstones and then the decision. Yeah, the, those. The last minute. Oh yeah, that was a. Some that was a big. In the dark of night. Yeah. Do, <laughs> do this. Yeah, that was a big. Uh, the Norwegian word is oopstus. <laughs> Big argument about that because uh, uh, th there were people who didn't want those stones moved. So what they did was they moved the, the stones that were there before the uh, before the even the new churches were built. They crowded them all up against the wall or the back of the cemetery. Yeah. So they were standing all in a neat row there. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what happened to those. I think, I think to to get away from that, they uh, <clears throat> there's a monument now in yes. the cemetery. Yeah. And a number of the stones have been reset. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. where the graves yeah. were. Always. No. Yeah. See, and then that's the problem yeah. with putting that road in there because you know you're wasn't that the issue of you're the driving on people oh yeah the yeah. parking of the cars yeah, and stuff yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that was the issue that was another nasty argument but uh but we got through it oh yeah yeah not entirely not entirely <laughs> not entirely probably not but, yeah no. probably not <laughs> yeah so you yeah. worked with Ralph as as lead pastors and uh, did Ken follow Ralph? Oh. Yeah, Ken call, followed Ralph. Okay, and then after Ken were... Well there was Bauer, Bauer, Bauer and there was Friedrichs, yeah. and there was... Oh boy. Then did Jim come? Late, late 80s? Early 90s? I, yeah, I, yeah, I suppose, yeah. Oh, um, Harry Mueller. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, do you, uh, are there things your kids ask you, your grandkids ask you about, about when you were young and so forth? Do you get a chance to talk to them about such things? Oh, yeah, I do. I, I, oh, yeah, I started milking when I was six years old. Yeah. And, uh, and and all the miles he had to walk to get onto the bus and oh, you know <laughs> and when yeah. i and when i played basketball i had to walk home after the game yeah, yeah. <laughs> no we i used to walk a, a mile and a half from home because i i i was enrolled in a country school uh -huh. and my dad decided for we because we lived a little bit over two and a half miles from the school, and he used that as, as a, a good talking point. So we rode the bus, but we had to walk a mile and a half to catch the bus. Okay. And if it was the winter time, then, you, then we rode in a horse-drawn bus. Sure. And I can remember uh, one, of the <laughs> one of the drivers came from a family of, I think, Eight, seven or eight kids, Clevens they were, mm -hmm. and uh, I can remember him sitting in the front seat. And I, I always used to sit in this horse-drawn. It was a, uh, a rearranged milk wagon huh. with a cover on it, uh, foot warmers to oh keep our feet warm, and a, and a door that would close up tight. Yeah, but I can remember the driver. And his name, name was Arvid Clevin. And he'd say, get up there, horse. You think this is Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh, and we drove, we drove uh, for years that way. Yeah. And if it was winter time, then it was then it was certain that you could have to go in these horse-drawn things. Yeah. Certainly, as a child, you used horses on the farm primarily. Oh yeah. 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 On the farm, I don't know. If, I think uh, we we had horses till till. Uh, I think, I think my brother, uh, Beneth, uh, bought a tractor after after we uh, we we uh, my dad died. Okay. He died in 1946, and uh, I think by by uh, by the time that uh, we bought a tractor in '50, that was my time for. Going back to Concordia or okay. starting Concordia. So sure, sure. No, wait a minute. No, that's wrong. Uh, yeah, 46. Yeah. 46. You started Concordia. Oh, yeah, in 1949, we went to Norway. That's where it was, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, <clears throat> so we bought our first tractor then. Do you have any recollection of how much it cost to go to Concordia? It was really cheap. <laughs> Compares. I think, yeah, I think that uh, I, I, uh, I had saved up about seven hundred dollars to go my first year at Concordia. Yeah, and uh, every year it it got a little bit bigger, but. Yeah. Not tremendous. Yeah, not not a lot. No. no, it wasn't much. So I got out of there before the yeah. things got screwed up quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember what your first teaching salary was? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel rich? Oh, I, I was still, I was still paying out. Paying the guy that I borrowed money to go to Norway, uh -huh. <laughs> so I had to send him some checks. <laughs> oh, it's changed a great deal. Yeah. Well, how much was it? Three thousand dollars or something like that? To go to Norway? No, no. You, well, your first salary. Your oh yeah, salary. yeah. It was thirty-one hundred dollars. There you go. Thirty-one hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thirty-one hundred dollars. And you're right, probably. Yeah, yeah, that it's, debt. it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, gee, I know my but dad. That, that was in the that was in the depression, though. Oh yeah. Oof. Yeah. Well. Coming out of that. Yeah. yeah. My dad uh, worked at a managed a filling station when I was growing up in Haver, mm -hmm. and he got two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember we always had a standing bill at Montgomery Ward. Oh, yeah. Mother was always sure we got new new dress for Easter and yeah. Christmas clothes and and then and then we you know we were, there was rationing at that time you know sure. bananas you'd have to ask for bananas and they take some out of un, un, underneath you know and sugar <laughs> oh, yeah. and we always had a standing bill at the grocery store yeah. you know you'd pay on it every month and did your father's gas station have the the pump that you'd fill up the uh, glass? Cylinder. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But you know, I never felt, I never felt neglected, and if we got sick, Dad would bring us home milkshakes, and uh -huh. you know, yeah. uh, or he'd take us, he'd take us to the, we had a kind of an ice cream parlor that was kind of a, yeah. a Doc's Blue Moose, <laughs> uh -huh. and the kids hung out there. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, I had some wonderful experiences in, in teaching, too. Mm -hmm. I, uh, she used to work for a, a clothing store in town. And I used to go pick her up after school. But the guy that worked in the next door hardware store was telling all kinds of stories about me. <laughs> and it, it wasn't true. Yeah. And uh, one time when I was at the church, 
uh, signing up for a communion. So I signed up and, uh, and just as I was about to leave, I ran right into this guy who had been up at the hardware store right next door. Yeah. So I said, O.P. Johnson, that was his name. Um, uh, so uh, I said, why don't we step into the Sunday school room here? And at that time, there was a little little room and then the stage. Uh -huh. uh, and we stood right on the end of that, that little room there. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry because I, I really chewed you out royally. And he said, well, I, I slandered you. And uh, I went down and, and uh, waited for communion. At that time, we were having communion in the evenings. Uh -huh. So I sat somewhere with, uh, with Vivian, I suppose, with you. Uh, and I don't know where O.P. Johnson sat, but uh, we wound up kneeling side by side yeah. at the communion rail. Life has been good. Life has been great, yeah. 